Hello, Salaam Alaikum and Namaste. Welcome back to another session with your war chef at warawar.com. Today we are going to learn how to knead the dough and make puris. A puri is a typical Indian unleavened bread popular all over India. They are small pancake sized rounds of dough that are rolled and slipped into hot oil or ghee where they fill with steam and puff up like a balloon in seconds. Trust me, after this session, you will never again go wrong with puffed up puri. It is a delight to eat puris because I love to see guests longingly look at puffed up puris and kids love to poke a puffy puri which gradually sinks as it releases hot air. Puris form a great accompaniment to mixed vegetable korma and many other curries. It is also served with sweet called halwa in western India and Pakistan and popularly called Puri Halwa. The fondest memories of Puri Halwa was when I climbed up early in the morning to Vaishnava Devi and at a small kiosk at around 3 a.m. in the morning after a long climb eating Puri Halwa really felt like I reached heaven. In India, Puri is a must at special and ceremonial functions. Enough stories. Let's learn the process of making puris. Puris are made out of wheat flour, usually with salt and water. Make a stiff but pliable dough. It is different from chapati as it is not a soft dough. Let me tell you one little secret in making puris. Suji is nothing but coarse wheat flour. This will help in making your puri stay puffed for little longer than a normal dough. Do not add too much of uh, suji as this can make your puri hard. Now let's make the dough. Add water but be careful. Unlike chapatis, you have to make a little bit harder dough. Don't get tempted and add more water. This will take, you know, few minutes of kneading and it is little more tougher to knead than a chapati dough. Now you can see my dough is almost ready. But you can also see the flour, little bit dry flour all around. So this is a very good dough because when you rest it for like 15 minutes, all this sucks up the water from the dough and makes it really, really nice dough. Add little oil and knead the dough little bit, not too much. Now the dough is ready, we put little oil on top of it. So now you can rest this dough for like 15-20 minutes. That's when we will make our puri. Now we have rested the dough for 15 minutes. Now let's proceed with rolling the puri. If you see, the dough is tough. It is not sticking to the hand at all. And at this point of time, knead the dough little bit more so that if there is any dry ingredients in it, it will get mixed up. Roll your dough into nice long shape. Cut it to the size of a very small lime. Make it into small roundels. Once you have your puri cut into small pieces, all you can do is wet up your hands with little oil, mix up the puris. What this does is, it first thing is, even if I put everything in one lot, they don't stick to each other. Second thing is you don't need to apply any extra oil while rolling the puris. Now let us learn how to roll a puri. To make a puri, press flat and then apply little pressure. For this method, we are not going to use any flour. If you apply flour to this, when you fry the puri, it will discolor your oil. Make into a thickness which is even, even all over. If you have some surfaces very thin and some surfaces thick, your puri won't puff up good. Or even if you make it very thin, it is not good. Repeat the same process to roll out all puris. And you can roll as many at a time and keep in your fridge. Make sure you cover up with a, with a slightly wet cloth. Squeeze out all the moisture out of the cloth and just cover it up. And you can fry when you just begin eating. That way you can serve hot puris. Put it in hot oil. 
Okay, when they come on top, all you have to do is take a spoon, press on the top. See, when you press it on the top, what you are doing is, you are pressing one bubble, with the pressure you apply on that bubble, it, it helps it puff up real good. If you don't press the bubble, the puri may not puff up properly. Frying puri should take just few seconds. Flip the puri over and cook the other side until golden brown. So we will fry some more puris. I learned making puris at a very very young age. Probably I think at 8 or 9 I was making puris. Uh, I was helping my mother in the kitchen. Another way is you can rotate your spoon on top of this. Uh, like this. That way it evenly presses on all the directions. Okay. Make sure you don't spill the oil all over. <laughs> Make puris as close as possible to serving time because otherwise they will go flat and not be as presentable. And when you add little semolina or suji, the puris will puff up and remain puffed for a little longer time. I get so involved with food and love to tell stories. So I must tell you that a variant of puri is called batura and often served with chole and called chole batura, which is twice the size of a regular puri and thus a single chole batura often constitute a full meal and we will also learn how to make batura in one of our other sessions. I hope you enjoyed today's session of puri making and learn from it. Remember that whatever is all about inspiring others to cook and eat fresh food. So please post your recipes and cooking tips so others may benefit from your great cooking. Thank you.